Welcome to this special edition of UNI TV, a joint production of journalism and electronic media classes. I'm Thomas Winkleman. And I'm Ryan Joyner. Today we will tackle a topic that has been on the minds of many UNI students, teachers, and administrators lately. Right now, from the University of Northern Iowa, this is UNI TV News. It started with approximately three dozen messages on a social media site called Yik Yak. Like Facebook, Yik Yak allows strangers to communicate and connect, but unlike most social media sites, Yik Yak works with anonymous postings. It thrives on a blend of anonymity and proximity as the users have a certain area in order to post. The comments were racial slurs, xenophobic and homophobic remarks that were posted by someone within a mile and a half radius of campus as the app only allows users in this shell, so to speak, to post. A UNI student group, I too am UNI, screenshot the original postings and uploaded them to the, on their Facebook page. The comments have offended many who believe our campus embraces otherness and celebrates it. They have drawn attention to diversity and forced us to ask the question, if we can do better. As journalists, we couldn't help but shed light on these hurtful messages and their effect on the UNI community. Joining me to discuss the situation are uh, my advanced reporting students, Lexi Moore, Nick Alvarado, Amanda Heckenmiller, and Kenneth Fox. Um, were you guys surprised when you found out that the messages were posted? Did it surprise you and then did it offend you? Um, offend, yes. Um, definitely disappointed, but I can't say exactly surprised because you know some things like this are just going to be there. Um, people are going to have their opinions, their ideas, but it's just disappointing to see them come out this way, especially with the anonymous way that they were done because it shows, um, I, I think, a lack of courage, to be honest with you, someone who isn't willing to stand behind their word. Thank you. What you just saw and what you are currently watching are clips from the UNI Day of Solidarity rally outside Mocker Union on November 6th. The rally was an effort on behalf of the university to really stand up and stand together in the aftermath of the controversy that was surrounding Yik Yak. As you just heard from Ryan and Thomas, the anonymous social media app Yik Yak was at the center of recent racial, xenophobic, sexist, homophobic, and just all around hurtful comments. Our class attended the rally as journalists to really experience the emotions of those who were affected and those who decided that we can do better. And it really was an emotional and uplifting experience personally for me. As you can see, there was a solid turnout and you could feel that everyone there truly got involved with what was happening. We got to hear the stories and of a few students as well as listen to faculty members who really passionately talked about what we can do as students and just as people to stand up do better and not let hurtful things like this happen again. I think it was a positive and appropriate me and meaningful action on behalf of you and I, and I look forward to it becoming an annual event. Everyone really seemed to, to turn a positive experience from it. And I hope that it continues. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it really was a, a, you know, qu quite a special event attended by a lot of faculty members and a lot of students and several of the students did talk about their, their stories and their experiences. Um, Mandy, you, you were part of that as well? Yes, I was. Um, also, as journalists, we contacted the founders of the site, um, Tyler Drool and Brooks Buffington. Um, they did not return our request for an interview, but on the site, um, you could see that obviously this issue um, it wasn't a first time occurrence. They had some links that took you to places where if you wanted to request what they called a geofence, which is basically stating it's what you and I looked into doing, um, that like Yik Yak wouldn't be able to function within a certain area, and they do that around a lot of high schools. Um, and so, you know, they obviously have had the issue. There's also a place, you know, for the press to contact them. Obviously, they didn't get back to us, but um, just by seeing the site, you could see that, you know, this issue wasn't just at the University of Northern Iowa. I know in, in another class, me and you had discussed, Anelia, what we as students thought punishment for these people, if they became known, would be accurate or what would fit the situation. Yeah, 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 appropriate. I wonder what you guys think maybe 
that aren't in that class that we discussed, what would you guys do for punishment if the people that posted these things became known? Well, I mean, can we really punish <coughs> someone for, I guess, um, Freedom Dan of speech. Yeah, dancing on that line between freedom, freedom of speech and hate speech. I mean, because it's a very tricky line to kind of, you know, try and balance on. So I, I'm not sure really if I could suggest any kind of punishment that would be even considered because, you know, free speech is a right that we're yep. given um, with our Constitution. So yeah, actually, we did, we did talk to a lot of people, and so the, the punishment uh, suggestions they they ranged from expulsion to <coughs> reprimand to mental health counseling. I mean, people gave all kinds of opinions regarding this, um, and it, they, they really range the, the entire scope of, of suggestions. Um, let's take a short break, and we'll be right back. College is an avenue for learning that can lead to successful job opportunities in the future. However, the education you need cannot be gained simply by going to class. Joining Cedar River Productions is the best way for you to get hands-on experience and one-on-one -on -one help with technology that will be crucial for your future. This is your chance to get ahead of other students by gaining knowledge about new technology. You'll be given all the opportunities to turn your ideas into reality and fine-tune your skills and abilities along the way. Make the most of your college experience. Become a member of Cedar River Productions. I am a future panther. I am ready to transfer. I am building my skills. I am social networking. I am investing in my future. I am challenging my students. I am running my own business. I am you and I. I am you and I. You can be too. Visit IamUNI.net. Experience, the community, the chemistry, the expertise, the right fit, and all the opportunity in the world to create your masterpiece. Enjoy the university experience in perfect proportion. And because we teach how to learn, the students of UNI are well prepared to create a lifetime of masterpieces. Create your masterpiece. Experience the University of Northern Iowa. It's just, just right. right. It's the perfect size for me. When I took the tour, I just knew this was the place for me. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it just, just felt, felt right. right. My professors know me. There's so many academic choices. I could major in anything here. I got to do research with my professor my sophomore year. I haven't graduated yet, and I already have a job offer. I just got accepted into grad school. I feel, I feel confident. confident. I'm, I'm ready. ready. Welcome back. After the Day of Solidarity, I ran into a family from Texas, and um, those were, um, you know, those of you who attended the, this uh, this meeting know that it was very emotional for a lot of people. And uh, the people that I ran into, uh, her name is uh, Miss uh, Chiriozella, and uh, long, she was with her daughter, a three-year-old daughter, and she was also with her mother, Dolores and uh, they both were very moved by the experience. Let's take a look about what I learned from them. What was the day like for you? Um, emotional. Uh, we've had, I've had some instances where I've, I've had, you know, a run-in with, I mean, the campus police, and, and I just feel very, how would I say, uh, prejudiced against. Um, my husband is black, I'm Hispanic, of course, my daughter is mixed, and I just, it was very emotional today. I, I, there's students on campus that just look at me weird, and and it's it's all over campus. It's all over campus, and I think it's it's time that we, we put an end to it. Put an end to it. I'm so glad you brought your daughter with you. Yes. Yeah. Did you think it was important for her to be there? Or? Yes, it is important for her to be there. She's well, she's a mixed race baby, and and. It's going to affect her too. It's going to affect her too. The line trickles down and it's important. And if I don't make a change, if we need to make a change. It's not for us, for our next generation. So, so was it healing for you or? It was healing for me. I felt, I felt um, more support. I felt that I wasn't alone. And that's very important for me. That I know that, I, that there's students on campus that are, I have the same feelings as I do, that there's other students on campus that are 
that are like me, that we're not alone. What will you tell your daughter about today when uh, when she grows up? She's how old is she now? She's three. She's three. She's okay. Three. Um, and she is already planning on being a, a panther. So I did I did get a scholarship for her for her associates to come here, oh. and um, I'll probably tell her. You know, it's 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 not easy. It's not easy. But hopefully, you know, I made a change. I made a change. Well, we did hear her chant along, alongside yes. the, the grown-ups, and yes. and uh, do you think she understands what she what you were feeling and what you're talking I, about? I think she did understand. I was very emotional. I was crying, and she did say, "We." When they said we can, she said, "Feel better," because I was crying, and she knows it's it's emotional for me. I, I do feel very emotional towards it because it's it's. Sometimes I just feel like I'm not a human being, I'm just an object. What happens after today? What has changed or what will change or will anything change? I'm hoping a lot will change. I'm hoping that we can get more, um, I guess, something solved. Uh, at least more, maybe a little more publicity so that there is actual diversity instead of just the slogan diversity at UNI, that there actually is diversity at UNI that a lot more of the students and the faculty and staff here are a lot more open-minded than they have been. We traveled 19 hours to come and be with my daughter, to support her here. Today? Today. 19 hours? 19 hours. It, 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 we traveled 19 hours. Why, why was it important for you to come here in person? Because our daughter is, is Lat, Lat, Latina, and there's a small amount of Hispanic of uh, students on campus, and uh, <laughs> very few. And she needs support, and we as family are here to support her. And we're gonna do whatever we have to do to support each other, to succeed. And diversity doesn't exist wholly on campus, but she's not alone. And if we have to travel 24 hours, we would travel 24 hours, because she is worth it, because we love her. And support should come at any cost, any price, any amount of time. And that's why we came to see her. And she studies without her. She lives with me. My granddaughter lives with me in Texas. But we made th this big trip and surprised her yeah. and okay. showed up. Yesterday, I didn't even know she was. We want to thank Amanda for her insight. Um, it was valuable work that she did. Um, now, when it comes to that video, uh, I. I'm also from Texas, I'm from San Antonio, and I came over with the same scholarship program that she did, so um, I can relate a lot to what she uh, was experiencing. Maybe not in a personal sense where I haven't had any um, actual racism or derogatory things said to me, maybe as she had, because she was obviously very upset by um, some of the uh, things that were said on Yik Yak, and uh, it was, I, I thought it was really touching for her family to come down like that, because um, I know that if I was uh, in the same state that she was in, uh, I would definitely feel better if my family came back. But uh, I, I just think it's uh, so terrible that people in this day and age can be made to feel, you know, less than belittled. or belittled. Yes, exactly. And uh, I just, um, I guess I can. It, it hits a little closer to home knowing that she's from the city I'm from, the state I'm from, and she's the same race as me. It's. Um, <laughs> It, it, it hits a little close to home. So um, when watching that, I, I guess, like I said, I wasn't surprised, um, but disappointed and a little offended. Yes, I was. Sure. Thank you, Nick. As, uh, as mentioned in the beginning, we reached out to the site's founders, but we didn't hear back from them. We also reached out to the Dean of Students, Dr. Leslie Williams, and she made herself available for questions and anything that we might have had. And we definitely had a lot of questions for her to answer. at Drake University, there was a post on Yaket that was regarding a student threatening to make Columbine look like a kindergarten class or something like right. that at Drake University, and the university then took it upon themselves to find who that student was, yeah. and then they arrested him. Uh, what would be, I mean, if you did find a way to get these posts related to a certain person, what would be the actions that would be taken? The police did determine that one to be a, an imminent threat to the campus. Um, so the police took, you know, got a, a search warrant that they served, a subpoena they served on Yik Yak, which required them to disclose the IP address. That student ended up turning himself in. 
um, to the police. If our campus were to find it out, it would it would be the, for the police to decide if it was a crime. So they would make that decision. It would be our office to determine if it was a violation of policy. And again, it would depend on what they said. And if they said one of the comments or all the comments, if they say it was like two or three people and they're not, if they don't even know each other, they're just you know doing things that are, they're not really have the ability to create an environment or do anything together, it might be a totally different thing that we find out is the basketball team doing this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's hard to say exactly what would happen because the dynamics behind it are so varied that there's no way to know. We would certainly look at our code and do whatever we could to, you know, find them responsible for, some, for something to hold them accountable for their behavior. Um, it would so vary depend on what they do to determine exactly what that would be. I can't, like, I know the students are telling me we'd kick them out. I can't say that 100% because I just don't know the answer. Yeah. Um, that post by whoever it was about the hanging African Americans from trees for Christmas. Right. What would what would be like the, I mean, that's a specific case. Right. That's obviously a very threatening post. Uh, what would be the university's response to finding out who that was? Just to try to narrow it down. It's very possible, I mean, that that person could be suspended or expelled from the university. The suspension and expulsions go to a, a panel of um, students and faculty and staff that hear cases. So there are five people that would make that decision. If they, if that, if we figured out who that was, um, that person could possibly be a minority. Like you never know who it is. So it's like one of those things that they could just be trying to get a rise out of folks. Like we have no idea. So say it was a student that we knew who it was. They'd go to the hearing panel. The hearing panel would discern, determine which way they go. Going to a hearing panel means you're likely to be suspended or expelled. If it was a minority student, or if it is a minority student, student does that change at all some of the repercussions that could be ended up? I don't think so. I think it might be a different conversation, um, but I don't think it would change the full repercussions. So what if it, if it was uh, some agent provocateur who's not even a student who has nothing to do with campus? Or there's really not much, there's not much that we as a university could do with that at all. We would certainly ask the police to do something, but we as a university would not be able to have any jurisdiction over them. Um, it would still affect the university. Right. It would still affect the university. Oh, certainly, yeah. It still affects it, we just have no control over it. Um, as far as uh, repercussions go, if a student were to be expelled or something like this, um, and what if that student decided to come back and sue the university for uh, repressing freedom of speech rights and stuff like that? How, is that something universities try to take into account for? Or anything like that? We don't think of those things on the front end. I mean, that's always a student's right for no matter what we do at our university. A student always has a right to appeal and sue us for that. We have legal counsel for those types of things. If I worried about every time I thought I might get sued, I would probably not. I'd be paralyzed in my job. So it's something I really don't worry about. You know, I guess uh, things have students, minority students come and said to you, um, if I'm assuming some have come and spoken yes. to you, what have been some concerns and what have been some of the specific things they could be worried about? Um, I've heard everything from I'm afraid to walk across campus at night that someone might snatch me up and lunch me. I mean, I, I someone has said that to me. I, I asked him, I said, you actually believe that? I was like, what, what are we going to do about that? Like, you know, I, I feel bad saying, is that how you really believe it? You know, she said she did. So. Um, you know, so I have people that say that they're actually afraid for their lives. Um, mostly what I'm hearing is that people just think that this is part of a bigger problem on our campus, that we're, it's, it's a symptom of a larger problem, that we are not, we have a, a cultural problem on our campus that people aren't, you know, there's microaggressions, you know, that happen all the time, that people aren't addressing them, that someone will say something in class and the professor won't do anything about it, um, that something will happen in the residence halls and nothing will happen, that I've heard a lot that if it was an African-American student who had done this, we would have found out immediately and kicked them out. You know, that if it was turned around on the other way, we would have acted differently. I would try to tell them that is not the case and that would not happen, but that's how they believe. And I have to, you know, I know that their own perception is their reality and I have to meet them where they are on that. So I have to kind of understand that, you know, while I want to tell them we would not act differently if it was a minority student, they would not believe me. Is everyone aware of how serious this really is? I think everyone's aware. The meeting that we had with the, all the groups I was talking about, when a you know when an African American student says, you know, you and I is going to be the next Ferguson here, you feel it, and you want to do something about it like immediately. And you know, you I cannot take away 
what they're feeling, and I can't solve it instantly either. And that is the hardest thing in the world, is to hear someone say that, one, they're either they're afraid to walk across campus, that they're scared of their professors, or that they think this is going to be the next Ferguson because something's going to happen that's going to set something off. That, you know, I'm just like, I don't, you know, and they say things like they're walking on eggshells. I do not want our students to feel that way. Like, that is heartbreaking to hear a student say something like that. And whatever we can do to try and help that is what I want to do. I know we all appreciated the Dean's candor. She was very open with us and uh, she was. answered every question well. Um, we're going to be right back after this short break. I am a future Panther. I am ready to transfer. I am building my skills. I am social networking. I am investing in my future. I am challenging my students. I am running my own business. You can be too. Visit IamUNI.net. Experience. The community. The chemistry. The expertise. The right fit. And all the opportunity in the world to create your masterpiece. Enjoy the university experience in perfect proportion. And because we teach how to learn, the students of UNI are well prepared to create a lifetime of masterpieces. Create your masterpiece. Experience the University of Northern Iowa. Discover the place, the thinking, the numbers, the canvas, and all the opportunity in the world to create your masterpiece. Learn how to learn at the University of Northern Iowa, and you'll learn you can create a lifetime of masterpieces. Create your masterpiece. Discover the University of Northern Iowa. Welcome back. At the rally, my fellow reporter here, Lexi Moore, scored a scoop with President Bill Rood. As you know, the president had been on medical leave, so this was his first big public event. Uh, first of all, how are you feeling? You Feel glad great. to be back to work? Feel great. I'm great sure you're getting that question work. a lot. Great to be back and great to come to an event like this. Right, right. So how do you feel after watching this extraordinary event of students coming together? Well, I, I can't sum it up any better. Stephanie did a great job. Deshaun summed it up when he looked out at this group, but he said, this is support. And I think we need to remind ourselves as we look around, we're the UNI family, and we need to support everybody as best we can each and every day, in and outside the classroom, and really make this continue to be the great place it is. I'm sure you're very, feeling very proud right now. Very proud, very proud, uh, but at the same time, ever vigilant, vigilant to make sure that as things are uh, identified, no matter how minor, that people feel comfortable in having a conversation about them, stepping up, and making sure that people understand, are educated, and that we uh, we fix those things. Do you think that you and I as a whole will be more alert and ready the next time a controversy like this may spring into action? I'm very hopeful. I think, uh, I think we need to consistently remind ourselves that we are all here. It's all about learning. It's all about students. It's all about student faculty staff relationships. So yeah, I, I think this is a great event. I think as Stephanie said, this is the first annual. Okay. So I'm hopeful. So that means there will be. I'm hopeful there's a second annual, the third annual, a fourth annual. That would be. But great. other events that aren't necessarily just this, that people come to a variety of events, and again remember that we are the UNI family. All right, great. Thank you. So as we have discussed this issue, there's been one question that's come up, and that is, should the university ban uh, Yik Yak from students being able to use it? And here's what one student told Anelia. In terms of Yik Yak punishment, I don't think that there's anything that can technically be done legally by the university. Um, I feel like, although the students, um, Yik Yak is a public app, so I feel like if people start stop running away and undownloading the app, if people go back to the app, and if they go back and sit, go back and they download things and say this is not appropriate, this is not what we agree with. Um, as a community, these people will be silenced and maybe understand that their their actions are not acceptable and it's not something that we believe in or care about because they're stupid. <laughs> 
were you offended by the by the comments? Oh God, it, so many things were offensive to everyone. Uh, there were just the amount of different things that were said. They weren't just. Um, it wasn't all just like hate to African Americans or hate to um, you know LGBT community. It was hate um, even to um, some people in the FSL fraternity and sorority community. It just affected everyone. It was just like a blow up of hate and anger that. I don't even think 1% of the population of you and I agree with. It was probably just a couple of people, and then they just, nobody downloaded it because everyone's run away from the app because it's been so depressing. But from this point, it's gone from depressing and stupid to irresponsible and hateful, and it's not acceptable. And I feel like you and I as a whole needs to run back at it and just knock it out. Uh, Kristen Broadbeck's story is one that stuck with me as well as everyone else while we were working on the show. She obviously is very passionate about it and so are a lot of the students on campus, as well as faculty. Uh, I agree with Anelia that we need to do this not just for who's here now, but for the next generation of people that will come here. You, you know what really worries me is that, that uh, there are so many things going on and so many things wanting our attention, demanding our attention, that what worries me is that we'll forget. And, and what has become a very positive experience as a result of the uh, uh, awareness raising opportunity and the rally and everything else that it will just go into the history books and people will forget about this and I, I really worry about what we will do as we move forward and if our fatigue of, of um, sustaining an event like this will really be realized as a, as a real opportunity for us to talk and to act on, on, um, on situations like I this. I think also that uh, rather than just looking at it as individual issues people need to look at the reasons that these issues arise. Why, why are people acting this way? Are they, are they taught that this is okay to act this way, that there aren't repercussions for it? Or is it just ingrained in the way that they think? And we need to look at why it might be ingrained versus dealing with the symptoms rather than dealing with the cause. Well, despite what many people think, racism is still something that's alive in our country, whether people would like to believe it or not. And um, it's, it takes things like this, like this yik yak, to prove that things like this still are an issue. And uh, it's something that, like this day of solidarity, like pre uh, President Root said, it's going to be an annual thing, hopefully. So maybe things like that, an educational program that can kind of, uh, you know, show people that this isn't the way to think in the 21st century, that we need to be thinking more about uh, progressivism, people, um, you know, loving one, one another, just the whole, you know, the way people should be acting nowadays. And uh, I, I think that, um, like how President Root said, making this Day of Solidarity an annual thing is one step in the right direction for you and I, at least. And actually, lo looking at the whole, the whole um, uh, range of initiatives that the university has uh, undertaken, it's quite impressive to see them um, as they develop. And I think we have a lot to be proud, proud of as, as a group. But I think something like this doesn't just offend one person. It doesn't just offend the people that it's directed against. It's offend, it offends all of us. It offends our sensibilities. It offends our sense of justice and rightness. And I think, most importantly, I think it should affect, affect us all and offend us all as civilized human beings. I would have to agree. I think that what was very offensive is that it just gave the university as a whole you know, a bad name, like a bad reputation. I, when people think of you and I, because you know, I have such a love for you and I, I love our school, I don't want people to think of it in such hateful ways, and I think that's disturbing. I, I appreciate how, how swift the reaction was. This stuff came out, the university reacted to it, and they nipped it right at, right at the beginning, and they started all of these events and all of this to move people in the right direction. And so now the challenge will be instead of the university reacting to it, can the university lead yes. the charge? Instead of the response, can the university lead the charge on an ongoing basis? Yes. And that's what I think is going on. It sounds like a conversation is only just beginning. And. And like any conversation, it hopefully will continue to map the road we are walking and highlight what we need to do to go forward and where we need to step in next so that we truly do better for those who come after us. Thank you for tuning in tonight.